Hello, my friends. I am here today to talk to you about Peter Clays Southman. And uh, if that's how his name is pronounced, you can never prove it by me. So you're going to have to forgive my attempts at Dutch pronunciation today. Um, if you want to feel comfortable, he, Peter Clays Suitman, was a painter during the Dutch Golden Age. About the year of our Lord, Lord, 1580, did his mother bear him in Haarlem. He breathed for his entire life's time until in Haarlem upon the 16th day of August in the year of our Lord 1607 and 50 he quit breathing. The province of North Holland was the most powerful of the seven provinces of the Dutch Republic. Haarlem was its head town. Arnold Hubrocken wrote of many artists of the Dutch Golden Age. Arnold was a Dutch painter and writer. He abode in Dordrecht. Arnold Hubrocken wrote that Peter Suitman's trainer was Peter Paul Rubens in Antwerp. Antwerp was a town and province in Flanders. In Saga, Antwerp was erst held by Jotnar and later settled by Franks. Jotnar are the forebears of the Jutes. Franks were a branch of the tribe of Benjamin. It may be that the Franks and the Jotnar were one and the same folk. Or it may be that the Jotnar were the Friars folk. I haven't the key to that mystery. Reason why I bother to tell to you about the history of Antwerp is to identify the source of its loyalties. The topic of loyalties is germane to the topic of the freedom of the Dutch Republic. And without, and let us say, only because of the Dutch Republic do we have the Dutch Golden Age, and only because of the Dutch Golden Age do we have the Dutch Golden Age painters, of whom Suitman is one. And you are here to hear about Suitman, so that's why I'm telling you about the history of Antwerp, because Suitman was trained by a man of Antwerp. Alrighty. Franks ultimately took the side of our foes. Thus, Antwerp is under suspicion of being a bad place by nature. However, the jury is still out. Flanders was under the heel of the Roman emperors. Rubens was a Baroque painter and quite tied in with the oppressor. His misalignment is foreboded by the width of his skull, the shortness of his neck. If, uh, in fact, it is short, it's hard to tell from a picture, especially as people get older. Sometimes their necks get thick and uh, they're, they get a tilt <laughs> to their posture that makes it look like their neck is shorter than it really is. And the shallowness of his eyes that you can see in his portrait, all suggesting that he was of mixed blood. Samuel Amzing was a Dutch minister, poet, and purist. Samuel wrote a saga of Haarlem 
in poetry. Samuel's writing held the history and told the top members and told of the top members of Harlem's folk. Samuel picked his words well. No words used he of Latin and French. He was alert to the fact that the influence of Roman tongues is scathful. We know that Peter Suitman was one of the top folks of Harlem because he was told of in Samuel Amsing's saga. Rubens recommended Peter to the Polish court as a top painter. Probably Rubens did it while Prince, Prince Vladislav Vasa visited to Antwerp. The year was of our Lord, 1624. That was the selfsame year wherein Peter went to Poland. In Poland, Peter was made to be the royal court's painter. Peter worked for King Sigismund III Vasa in Poland until the year of our Lord, 1628. The Polish royal family was a merger twixt the Vasa family of Sweden and the Habsburg family. Thus Peter painted pictures of Habsburg's and of Vasa's both. He painted a portrait of Gustav Adolf II, King of Sweden. Also, he painted the Habsburg emperors of Rome, Frederick III, uh, and the painting is titled Frederick IV because he was Frederick IV of Germany, even though he was Frederick III Emperor, and Matthias, Emperor Matthias, who was a Habsburg. Both of them were. Peter painted also a portrait of Samson and Delilah. That was the year when Peter went back to Harlem. After he got to there, Peter painted portraits of families for his own homies. Above all, he painted portraits for the other headmen of the Hofje, Kode, and Van Berstein. Peter was also one of the headmen thereof thereof meaning of the Hofia. A Hofia is a courtyard with almshouses around it. They were begun in the Middle Ages. Old and mostly poor, mostly women, abide there. They were paid for by Karen folks. The Coda Hofia merged later with the Hofia von Beristein. That is how it got its dual name, Coda and von Beristein. Claes von Beristein was a painter. He founded the Hofje von Beristein. A portrait of the Beristein's family was painted by Peter Soutman. Soutman. Later, it was mistaken to have been done by Franz Halls, and as such, was sold to the Louvre, 1860s. The paintings of Peter Suitman now hang in sundry musea. Also, they hang in the Huis ten Bosch in Den Haag. The paintings of the Dutch Golden Age mean so much to us excellent hand-painted reproductions are so cheaply available, every prosperous Christian family ought to have at least four reproductions of Dutch Golden Age paintings in their house of their own choice. Get yours by following the link that you see on your screen.